uh, we have now four lightning talks. Uh, uh, the first two lightning talks, uh, the first one by Johannes Riedel from the University of uh, Library of Tübingen, um, and the second talk uh, by Mario Trojan, uh, also from the University Library of Tübingen. Um, so they are both um, being uh, set up in the way that they are extending itself. And um, after that, um, there's Pata Sarati Mukut Pajai, and uh, last but not least, uh, Julia Beck, who have a lightning talk. And uh, we'd like to ask uh, the attendees that uh, questions uh, can be asked um, and written down uh, during the talks. And uh, after the lightning talks, we have uh, a 10 minutes question and answers session. Um, where we can discuss the topics and we could also, uh, if um, the, uh, the the topic of the modularization of WooFind uh, um, um, is being, uh, sh should uh, be discussed even further, uh, we can use this time also for those discussions. So please write down all your questions and then um, we will discuss after the lightning talks uh, in one whole block. All right, so now it's, uh, well, one minute past uh, two, three, so uh, two, two, sorry, UTC. So um, I would like to uh, introduce now Johannes Riedel from the University Library of Tübingen, and he will talk about the IXTO uh, catalog with full text search. And um, yeah, you're welcome to share your screen now and uh, begin your lightning talk. I will uh, let you know by, um, by, by, by a private message when the five minutes are finished. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, so, um, the screen is shared. Um, to at least roughly meet the time requirements, um, I recorded uh, the talk this morning. And um, yeah, here we go now. <laughs> Welcome to the lightning talk about the XTO full text search. At first, I will give you a very brief overview of the systems we have with our subject information services in Tübingen. Then I will show you what the full text search currently looks like. And then I will show you some aspects of the technical structure. In Tübingen, we've got uh, three systems with our Fachinformationsdienste or subject information services. The first being XTO with about 2.3 million entries. The second one being RELBIP for the study of religion that shares a common index with AXTO comprising about 550,000 entries. And the third one being CRIMDOC for criminology with about a quarter of a million entries. For a long time, uh, we have featured uh, a full text search in the CRIMDOC system. Um, however, uh, the data was only indexed, so uh, users complained when you get back a result that had a hit in the full text search that you could not uh, reconstruct why uh, precisely this record matched. Uh, this, along with some other reasons, uh, led to completely re-implementing the full text search that I will show to you now. Um, you see that about one-tenth of uh, our whole set is associated uh, with some kind of uh, full text. Um, if I search here for a term, for example, gender, you can see you get um, frequently uh, formatted results with uh, the types, um, three of them each. And a special feature we offer is that you cannot only search directly for the term, but although um, for the term plus synonyms of standardized keywords um, in the language you have chosen here above. So if we do that, you see that uh, there are synonyms in English. And a third option is um, to search in all supported languages and with all translations and synonyms in parallel, 
which will uh, increase your results at, uh, substantially. Um, moreover, you see it's uh, fairly closely embedded uh, to the ordinary system, so uh, we can uh, choose our ordinary facets, like here, book um, and English. And we have a kind of pseudo facet uh, above here, which uh, triggers a uh, new search. For example, if I take full text here. Um, if you think that a uh, title might be relevant for you, you can also click on the All Matches button and uh, go to the, then you're uh, redirected to the full title record and you get all the matches uh, that are there in all uh, the text types that are present. So, how do we achieve that? <laughs> Um, we have two sources of text, one being uh, commercial publisher text. Um, this is uh, currently a pilot project uh, with Brill and more that provided us with text that are generally not publicly available. And on the other hand, we evaluate the 856 field in our mark data uh, with free text that we harvest. Um, the texts are then associated with PPNs um, for our entries and uh, depending on the text type we, we get, uh, we uh, extract uh, either uh, from uh, plain text uh, HTML, um, if possible we convert PDFs using the popular uh, PDF to HTML to get a similar view to the original form formatting. And then this is stored in two versions in the Elasticsearch system, one in plain text and uh, one with the formatting. Only the plain text is only indexed, not stored in the solar system um, to get back the record results list. And then Solar and Elasticsearch used the same engine, namely Lucene. We can use uh, the same synonym files. Um, if you query a, a full text, you get the result list by WooFind and then um, the text snippets themselves are uh, asynchronously uh, loaded uh, using Ajax and uh, something we call the full text snippet proxy that um, triggers a query to Elasticsearch, uh, converts it uh, to JSON and then sends it back to the browser to be displayed. By that, we get a fairly clear separation of our standard system and the full text system, but from the user's point of view, um, it's fairly integrated. And now I just invite you to try it out and say thank you. Thank you very much. That was on spot. <laughs> All right, so the next talk is by Mario Trojan um, uh, from the University Library of Tübingen um, and the topic is the WhoFind SEO for IXTEO. So please go ahead and uh, start your lightning talk. Mario, I, uh, I cannot hear you. Um, sorry? Yeah, now I can hear you. Yes. Okay, okay sorry. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, my lightning talk is going to be about search engine op optimization. Um, for the ones of you who took part last year in the German summit, um, I already talked about um, what we did in the last year. And um, yeah, the conclusion was that uh, we did everything that was recommended, but somehow it wasn't really um, pro processed by Google in the best way. And um, since there has been uh, lots of good stuff happening this year, I just wanted to give you an update uh, and share our usage statistics with you. Now, these are taken from our uh, Matomo uh, installation and all the crawlers have already been fil filtered out. So this is really uh, the uh, 
yeah, like the, the manual visits and unique vis visitors from browsers and uh, not from any crawlers or bots. As you can see here, uh, in uh, January of 2020, we had about uh, 10,000 visits and about 6,000 visitors. And uh, as you can see in the curve, it has been uh, risen due the whole year up to over 100,000 visits and over uh, yeah, about 90,000 unique visitors. Uh, so it's like uh, more than factor 10. Uh, so we were quite surprised and um, of course we were trying to uh, search for an explanation for this. So um, just to sum it up a little bit, um, in 2019 uh, the optimizations that we made was on the one hand create a sitemap um, uh, with the Find basic feature. Um, it was very very large sitemap. We have like 2.2 uh, or 2.3 uh, million uh, records that we had to list there. So we had to split it up in several parts with uh, 10,000 records each and we provided that for uh, the uh, Google bots to harvest it. Then we uh, optimized our robots.txt file. Uh, we used that on the one hand to, uh, to uh, lock out certain bots that were just causing uh, uh, draining performance from the system without having any use for us. And we wanted to provide our resources to Google. So we locked uh, certain uh, robots out on the one hand. And on the other hand, we also um, prevented bots from crawling search results because you get the best search results um, for, for Google, the best indexing, if they directly harvest your record pages and not your uh, listings in the search results. So we did some, some optimizations uh, there. Then uh, we also did optimizations regarding schema.org, which is uh, like kind of a, uh, a mechanism to provide um, uh, inline machine readable data in HTML. Um, of course, also Wufine provides this feature as well, but um, on the one hand, uh, we have kind of uh, special data that we need to optimize this, uh, this situation to. And on the one hand, we were also um, uh, inheriting some templates and some of this, uh, the, our copies from the templates have been a bit old, so we had to uh, update them and uh, optimize it a little bit. And we also used the Google Search Console to, uh, yeah, to see what Google is crawling, what's going wrong, and so on. So the problems that occurred have been that, um, uh, on the one hand, there have been problems uh, by Google trying to download our sitemap. So uh, imagine you have uh, the sitemap parts, which are like just single files uh, in the in the same directory. You have like 220. Uh, sitemap parts and somehow half of them couldn't be downloaded by Google for no reason that made any sense to us. Yeah, so uh, we always wondered why why this was happening and we never uh, really understood it and always thought this should be like a, a problem on the Google side uh, on uh, yeah on, on the side of Google. So it's not not the problem that that was caused on our side. On uh, the other hand, uh, next problem that occurred was the crawl rate. So uh, Google was crawling about 1.5 thousand uh, pages per day from our system, which is not bad. But if you have like 2.2 uh, uh, million pages that needs to be crawled, then it will take years for Google to index your whole system. So um, that was the next problem. And the third problem was the load index rate. So imagine if Google has crawled about 500,000 pages, um, it may also be the case that they only list 40,000 of these 500,000 crawled pages because they think that they are just copies from each other or they are not relevant enough. So um, the, the total amount of index pages that could be searched by Google users was very low. And um, yeah, we, we thought, okay, let's just wait. Um, we can't do anything more at this point. Um, let's just wait and see what happens over the months and years. Um, down there below, you can find the link to the uh, WooFind wiki. Uh, and in the wiki, there's a yeah, more detailed description to, the, uh, to the, the single optimizations. Just a second. Okay. Um, mm 
need to start my presentation again. Somehow that doesn't work right now. Okay, so, um, so what happened in 2020 was that Google did lots of major core updates in January, May and August. And um, when we had a look into the search console again, for, like from one day to the next, uh, our index page count um, was, was coming up to 1.8 million index pages. So uh, they obviously, they fixed something on their side. So uh, that's the reason why we got more search results from Google. Uh, next thing we did was uh, a cooperation with Google Scholar. So um, we had a contact at Google Scholar who told us we should use Highwire Press Tags. And um, Highwire Press Tags um, have been uh, part of the metadata vocabulary feature that we implemented for WooFind 6.1. You can have a look at the pull request if you like. And uh, if you uh, remember the uh, like 100,000 uh, visits per month, here you can see that search engines have like 60,000 uh, visits. Uh, so it's like a share of 56%. Uh, uh, and the website which is mainly Google Scholar is like 33.5% and direct entries are, uh, yeah, like still like 10%. Search engines are mainly Google, like 95% of, of the share of search engines come, back, come from Google. And you also see that, uh, yeah, the share of the websites from Google Scholar is also very high. So um, yeah, so like uh, what happened was like now we have 100,000 uh, accesses per visits per, per month with like 50% uh, by people searching from Google and 30% uh, from uh, people coming from Google Scholar. And um, yeah, I can just recommend uh, that you uh, also try to, to um, yeah, export this high value press metadata. So if you're interested, you can also uh, yeah, try to contact Monica Westin, uh, which I would like to, to give special thanks to at this point because uh, yeah, she, she supported us very much in the process. Um, and um, here you can see on the one hand her website, she's the um, head of the Google Scholar Partnerships Program. Uh, so you can have a look at her website if you're interested and try to contact her. And um, I also provided here a more detailed explanation on the high wire press um, fields that you need to export, but you can use uh, the metadata vocabulary feature for like 90% of that. And also special thanks to Demian Katz for the support on the pull request. Uh, I think we had uh, a yeah, very long com conversation, but we found a very good uh, solution in the end. So. Yeah, um, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mario. And, very interesting. Oh, yeah, sorry. And one, one addition. So um, I would like, um, if anyone had made the same experience this year without changing anything, that the, uh, the Google, uh, Google indexing has been better. So uh, please let me know. I'm very interested in that. If it's just has something to do with the high bio press we did for Google Scholar or if it's just uh, coming from the, uh, the, um, the core updates from the Google side. All right, thank you very much. We'll discuss this pro hopefully later on. Okay, the next lightning talk is by Patasarati Mukhopadhyay um, on bibliographic relationships based navigation, a possibility in the forthcoming fervorized architecture of WooFind. Uh, hello. Uh, am I uh, clear and loud? Yes, we can understand you very perfectly. Do you have any uh, slides you can share? Uh, yeah. Otherwise, just fine. Fine. I, I'm trying. Okay, we can see a screen now. Your your browser now. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. All right. Okay. Uh, so this is basically a, a conceptual, uh, you know, paper. Not uh, I will uh, try to show you a proof of concept of this particular concept. But this is uh, hurriedly prepared on the basis of the declaration that the next view find uh, release will be including FRBR as an architecture as a bibliographic data model. So what more can be done? Uh, 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 that uh, that sort of thing I'm trying to communicate uh, with uh, with the presence of the galaxy of viewfinders here. 
So you all see that uh, the concept of work, which is basically the base of the FRBR model, bibliographic data model, first given by Lubezki way back in 1953, where he proposed that the book and the work are the same thing when the book has got only one edition. But book and work are two different concepts when there are multiple editions. And in a library, you all you can see that most frequently used books have multiple edition, variant form of the author's name, different title information, different edited sheets, and so on. So work and book are two different contexts in the concept, you know, in, in case of the most frequently used uh, documents in a library. So later on, Barbara Tillett first formalized the uh, concept of bibliographic relationship. Uh, she proposed a taxonomy of bibliographic relationship, seven type of, uh, types of taxonomy. And you see, uh, she did it uh, in her uh, PhD research, and it has got you know, uh, different kind of uh, you know, influences, different flavors, degree of influences in the latter part of the work related to FRPR and uh, others, I, I'm going to tell you. So these are the seven uh, taxonomic relationships she proposed. And you can see all of you are habituated or acquainted with Dublin for metadata schema. They also include that kind of relationship called the laser in number in BC dot relationship. There are six pairs of bi-directional relationship uh, available. But if you come to FRBR, it's a very comprehensive set of relationship uh, which we can all have from the hookup.org FRBR. A code .html. I have given only a few alphabet in alphabetical order, but the whole set you can have from the bookup.org uh, slash FRBR. Now, uh, FRBR, although it's very comprehensive in compare with uh, Dublin Code Metadata Element sets, Pat Riva uh, recently uh, did a, uh, you know, published a particular year, not recently, way back in 2013 where she proved actually that all kinds of content designators like Mark 21, Unimark, Common Communication Format, their relationships can be typed into three fundamental categories, chronological, horizontal, and vertical. And uh, this is related to Mark only, all Mark type, how it can be typed and grouped. And that particular uh, three types of relationship can again be mapped with the FRBR relationship and with the Tillet taxonomy proposed in 1987. Now, on the basis of this particular fact, you all know this, uh, you know, this uh, FRPR mapping uh, related to item, item attributes, manifestation, manifestation attributes, not only the name of the illustration, illustrator, but also the work of the illustrator. And uh, you can, in this way, you can go to expression, work, and there are different kind of attributes like intent and audience, readability, all kind of these things you can add with the expression item at the expression level or at the item level. But recently, you know that we are going to base our model uh, uh, on the top of FRPR. But another model came up, uh, you know, recently where FRPR, FRAD, and FRACD, functional requirements for authority data and subject authority data, all march together to form IFLA LRM, Library Reference Manual. And they said there that the entire bibliographic universe is basically there is a trinity entities and their attributes and the relationship between the entities now on the basis of this model they also propose to new user tasks we all know that to find to identify to select are the three basic user tasks right from the time of the cutter but they introduced two new tasks uh, and the concept actually what uh Anne christiansen said uh, today earlier today actually related with this first one is that to obtain and second one to explore now, if we cross-section uh, these two new concept or new user tasks given by IFLA RLM, you can see here the importance of bibliographic relationships nowadays. The last uh, user task to explore this said categorically that browsing relating one resource to another, making unexpected connections, and particularly serendipity in information seeking is now one of the major objective of a discovery. And they also said categorically that, uh, you know, discovery systems now needs to support a relationship along with the feature uh, available for, you know, hyperlink based navigation from one resource to another resource so that your users can discover many other resources. So on the basis of this user tax and this new particular data model, uh, Barbara Tillett again at the age of 73 
came up uh, uh, with a new concept, which is the, basically the extension of cataloging theories uh, uh, by applying the graph theory model. So in this particular graph theory based cataloging model, she said that all four you know, uh, uh, group one entities as proposed by FRPR, work, expression, manifestation and item can be linked with a common node. And you can use this particular graph theory for providing different kind of bibliographic navigation facility. So on the top of this theoretical paper, we prepared a small prototype of Bengali language based cultural text that I want to show you here so that uh, we can all think that whether that kind of bibliographic relationship based navigation is possible inside viewfind or not. Because as we are going to support FRBR uh, uh, this, uh, you know, in the uh, coming uh, release. So here you see it's a simple DC uh, based metadata element. Here is a uh, particular uh, resource I have given in Bengali, but you can all, uh, uh, all identify the different kind of DC elements here, DC dot title, subject, etc. But here in this particular retrieval, uh, you know, uh, interface, we have also able, we are also able to provide a relationship matrix based navigation. If my user increase this enlarge button of relationship, they will be provided with two you know uh, different uh, routes say for example this is the primary reference this is the illust uh, cover illustration by a renowned artist and this is uh, uh, uh Varman, he is the author now if i select this particular cover based navigation route i can also identify that this particular cover page is illustrated by this artist and this artist had got many other paintings in my collection in the cultural collection which people can discover or end user can discover uh, very easily so uh, 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 if i have got another two minutes of time then i can show you the, in the live mode try to show you in the live mode also uh, as we and have, uh, as we okay already okay okay time and uh, okay okay then yeah, so we have you we have utilized here uh, you know uh, three you know, all open source component here omega digital archiving software avant relationship based plugin and uh, that kind of uh, you know uh, bibliographic relationship based for, you know linking is or hyper uh, hyperlink based navigation is possible so i'm ending here with uh, uh, a quote there is nothing more practical than a good theory thank you very much thank you very much Thanks. I'm sorry for cutting you off, but uh, we are already out of time. But uh, maybe later on we can uh, uh, resume, and if we have some time, you can show the demo. So uh, the next lightning talk is by Julia Beck uh, from the Frankfurt University Library. Um, you find in the context of Glam. Can you see it on full screen now? Yes, that's perfect. Okay. So. Um, so there was one slot left uh, for the lightning talk, so I thought I'd take the opportunity. And on the summit, I noticed um, that there were talks about, you know, other formats and also the scrubberization. So I thought I might fit in um, to show how we use viewfind because it might be a bit different when you normally have like library data, and we are instead also working with archives and museums a lot, which lead to a bit different. Uh, requirements to the service. So here you see that um, our service is based on Refined and it's on um, performing minus arts.eu. And we are aggregating um, data from the performing arts domain. So it's kind of similar to the tubing um, data that you saw before that, that was about religion or uh, criminology, and we are focusing on performing arts. And um, what is a bit different there is that we not only have books, but also labels and photos, but we have also a very strong focus on the person involved and the organizations, but especially also on performances, so events that happened and everything that was involved um, with the events. So um, still the viewfind portal looks a bit like any other portal from the beginning. <laughs> The thing that is different is that we have other search tabs to offer that are not only about books, but and because in other viewfind portals, then the other search tabs are something like from another um, ILS or um, from that you have journals there instead, but we have a search for persons instead and also for events so that um, users can find uh, more content about those. 
And when you click on the title, um, this here is a musical drama description, uh, then you can see that we have a lot of links already to offer to authority data and also to other representations like digital copies and um, yeah, to the event. And um, normally when you click in Viewfind on a link, then there is a literal search for the name. And in our portal, it's, if it's possible, then we link instead to the authority data. And that looks like this. Um, that we have a fact sheet in the beginning, which is loaded on the fly from the Lobit API, which is a service for authority data for the German authority file. And then below that, you get all the results that have to do with this person. Like here are some playbills and so on. So, and what we did uh, to viewfind to achieve that is um, once we changed the data model, because Mark was for us no option, um, as we have so much like object data, like costumes and so on, that are not really very good to map in Mark. So, um, instead, we use the European data model. Um, which is RDF based and so we can do all this linked data featuring and um, the mappings are done outside of viewfind which means we, we do it before and then uh, we really don't use any of the mark um, modules involved in viewfind but we are reusing everything in viewfind we are mapping to the viewfind solar schema and to the default solar record so mostly all of viewfind's functionalities work out of the box anyway <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and um, then we have also the full record that contains the EDM record instead, and we use it for export or if we have any special recommendations. And what we otherwise do to the index is that we are storing IDs um, for the agents and the events, which are the authority files, and then we make use um, of the authority core, where we can then offer uh, search tabs and other agent and event search um, functionality. And as I said before, we're using for that also the low bit up, it's happy, um, which gives us um, the opportunity to display those fact sheets for persons and organizations, but also for events. Um, but I have to say that this, of course, only works if you have let's say, rich data that already have those authority identifiers. We are doing also a bit of enriching, but it's not working very well, of course, as you can imagine, when you have persons with the same name, it's really not so much you can do. So this is still manual work if you want to have really good data. So in the last slide, um, as you can see, there's no triple score involved or anything. We are reusing a lot of the features that viewfind already offers and still we are trying to approach this linked data view on the like perspective of different entities that we are trying to also have some favorization in it um, we are also using dc terms as part of and as part as we have seen before in the other talk and um, the code is already available on github free to everyone to see <laughs> it's currently version 5.1 I still haven't managed to upgrade. <laughs> so it's not the very recent version, but still it might be worth to have a look if you are interested. And I'm forcing myself here with this last sentence to <laughs> make myself do a pull request soon, um, at least for the Lobit connection, because um, in my research for this talk, I saw that that was also something that was um, required in the community to maybe have this Lobit connection. So I hope I can make it as abstract so people can reuse it. So that was it. Thank you very much, Julia. <laughs> um, so um, we, although uh, we have planned a break for now, I think we will just wait. Uh, we will discuss the uh, lightning talks now. Uh, if there are some questions, um, we have got time left, I think, and. Um, I'm ready to read questions if there are any, um, or if someone wants to, um, to, to, to ask him or herself a voice, please raise your hand in Zoom.
Mario, meanwhile, uh, I'm already trying to uh, uh, look at our statistics, but um, I'm struggling with uh, our um, um, statistics server to compute the uh, statistics. So uh, maybe I will get back uh, to you later. <laughs> Okay, so uh, of course, if you have anything uh, regarding that, you can also send it to me after the conference. I would be very happy to get anything. Yeah, yeah for sure. Thanks. All right, as I see no questions right now, I would suggest that we go into the break and uh, be back in 10 minutes. That is uh, quarter to 3 p.m. Uh, UTC time. And, um, if, you and uh, if you have any questions uh, regarding the lightning talks, uh, uh, please feel free to uh, write them to the question and answers uh, feature by Zoom or to the chat. And then we can uh, continue the discussion uh, I think for the first 10 minutes of the road mapping session, uh, that should be fine. And then we will continue with uh, the road mapping session. All right, see you in 10 minutes. <laughs>